Now, I've got to be honest, when I first saw this shoe in store a long time ago, I really wasn't sure about it. All these sort of pastel yellow detailings, the fact that it's got a built-in gator system to that upper, and it came with this strange sort of medial protection pad. It was kind of unlike any other S-Lab shoe that I'd seen before. All that aside, when I tried it on in store, it was very comfortable, hugged my midfoot really well, good levels of cushioning in that midsole, and you get a pretty aggressively lugged outsole design. Uh, I always get excited when Salomon bring out a new s Lab product, and today we are taking these out on the trails and giving them a thorough testing. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well out there and thanks for joining us for another video. We've actually just got back from the first ever Bristol running show last weekend. We had a great time up there, we took the cameras along, we spoke to a few exhibitors, a few visitors, and we got to host a couple of the fireside chats and speak to some really interesting people. Uh, we made a video while we were up there obviously and that has just gone up on the channel. So if you wanna find out what we got up to, I'll leave a video link in the description. Right, let's get back to what you guys have come to see and it is these bad boys, Salomon's new S-Lab Genesis. So this shoe has been designed to be a high performance race day shoe, but if you're not familiar with Salomon's S-Lab products, this is quite different to what they normally produce. Those sort of strip back, uber light racing snake shoes, this actually has a bit more substance to it. So before we go out for a run, let's give you guys a few more facts and figures and break down the construction in a bit more detail. S-Lab products tend to use the sort of latest tech and they'll have gone through lots of sort of design and development using Salomon's Elite Runners. So they tend to come in at a pretty hefty price and this is no exception. So these retail in the UK for £180, although if you think about it, that's £100 cheaper than the Satisfy Norda 001 collaboration shoe. So maybe not that expensive in today's running shoe world. Weight-wise, they weigh in at 278 grams in a UK 9.5, so pretty lightweight considering the amount of shoe you get. And it runs off an eight mil offset, so you get a 30 mil stack height under your heel and 22 mil under your forefoot. As far as the shoe's construction goes, we've got a Matrix upper. Now, if you haven't come across Matrix before, this is actually a patented technology material that utilizes aramid fibers weaved through the fabric to give you good levels of comfort, efficient foot mapping support and good levels of durability. Like I mentioned a bit earlier, Salomon have worked in this gaiter system into the ankle of the upper just to try and prevent any sort of debris getting within the shoe when you're out on the trails having fun. It's kind of a booty construction or as Salomon call it, it's an endo fit. So giving you that internal sleeve to give you a very precise feel and lockdown. And then finishing off, we've got some printed overlays starting at the heel, working down past the midfoot, around those lace eyes and then finishing up wrapping around the toe box. And when it comes down to protection, this is a bit of an armored car. So first up, we got a very substantial toe bumper in that toe box. Gonna offer you lots of good protection if you happen to kick something when you're out on the trails. But it doesn't stop there because we've got these protection pads as well. So one on the medial side at the midfoot and then a slightly smaller one on the lateral heel. These have been developed to offer the runner good levels of foot protection when you're running on rocky terrain. And this is something that I haven't seen on a trail running shoe before. So we definitely need to find some rocks to test that out today. And this is why I love s -Lab products because they tend to work in new and exciting innovations into their shoes. Like most Salomon trail shoes these days, we don't have a standard lace system, we've got a quick lace. So this is basically a nylon cord system. All you have to do, super simple to use, pull that down tight around your midfoot, and then you just need to slide down this little locking mechanism, lock it into place, and you are ready to run. Don't worry about the lace that's left over because we've got a real handily placed sort of pocket work into the tongue so you can stow that lace away so you're not going to get it snagged when you're out on the trails. We've got a really good helping of Salomon's Energy Surge Foam in that midsole 
Big fan of this compound, really enjoyed running on it in the Ultra Glide trail shoe, but also the road shoe, the Glide Max. It's a lightweight foam that's developed by combining EVA and Olefin to deliver long lasting cushioning and bouncy energy return. Also worked into that midsole is a Profil film. So this is like a flexible plate that Salomon have laid on top of that midsole, just to give you a bit more stability in the shoe, but also underfoot protection. And then last but not least, let's talk about this all-terrain Contagrip rubber outsole. On first inspections, it looks nice and aggressive. So it should cope with the challenging sort of UK conditions we've got at the moment. Got this nice chunky 4.5 mil lug that should bite into the mud. And then we got that Contagrip rubber that should give us good levels of grip on all surfaces so making us feel nice and confident underfoot whether it's wet dry loose or hard terrain so there you have it the latest offering from Salomon's s lab department the genesis really nice to see them developing a few new features and also producing an s lab shoe that's got a bit more substance that might offer a bit more comfort and protection over longer distances so that all that's left to do is to go and get our running kit on and let's get out on the trails. A new place, a new home for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. So you join me up here on the epic North Cliffs of Cornwall. We've had some pretty shocking weather of late down here, so I thought with the sun out and the sky blue, we'd come up here and take in all the amazing views. Believe it or not, it's actually my first run since the Penrose Woods 10K. In that video I said I sort of tweaked my hamstring a bit, so didn't want to risk it. I've been resting it all week, managed to get some treatment on Monday, so I've been raring to go ever since. The sun's out, but it is still a bit chilly. There's a cold wind blowing, so we got wrapped up. Great conditions to test out uh, the new saw windbreaker top that we've got. I've also got their three season shorts on. So not only testing shoes, we're testing out some apparel as well. With the hamstring uh, playing silly buggers, we're just gonna take it easy today. So the plan for the run is we're gonna do a few miles on the flat along the North Cliffs. We're gonna get to Bassett's. We're gonna run a couple of the dips just to test the shoe out on some challenging descents and some challenging climbs. And then we're going to be nipping into Tahiti Woods. We should manage to get a good 10k in seven miles on a big mixed terrain. So it's going to be a great initial test for the shoe. But let's get out there. Let's get running. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive. As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky. Okay, we are two and a half miles in. First thing I've got to say is the hamstring is feeling okay at this nice steady pace. So a big thumbs up for me when it comes to the hamstring. We definitely need to talk about fit first of all. So I got the uh, Genesis in a UK 9.5, my normal size. When it comes to length, I would say it's true to size. It's fitting really well on length, but it is a very narrow fitting shoe. And that's coming from someone who's got quite a narrow foot shape. Now that really isn't an issue for me. It's actually fitting my foot shape really well. Nicely locked down around my midfoot. I feel really well sort of connected and supported by the upper. But if you had any width or volume to your foot, I think you'd really struggle with the fit of the Genesis. You do tend to find that's a bit of a trait of S-Lab shoes. They always tend to fit pretty narrow. But like I said, we're about two and a half miles in and we've just reached the dips. Or if you haven't seen uh, any videos where we've came out here and trained, we call them the bitches down here in Cornwall. You've got a section of six big dips. Great if you're training for a hilly or mountainous race. So we're gonna run a couple of the dips, only a couple. I'm not feeling the fittest I've ever felt in the world. So we're gonna run a couple. I think it's gonna be a real good test for the levels of grip and traction from that contour grip outsole. So let's get running, let's get down and up the first dip. I found my way. I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day. Cause I found my way. I found my way. In bad times, I know I'll be okay. Cause I, I really don't feel that fit at the moment. These dips are always hard work. one of the best views 
on the Cornish coast path. Just amazing, so inspiring, man. What a place to run. is the bitch is done i'm done as well that was hard work if you watched our sort of training and preparation for tds series these are the dips that i came out and i was repping them for sort of eight ten miles and getting in over a thousand meters of elevation i'm definitely not fit enough for that at the moment however a great place to test out the grip and traction of that outsole we got some real steep downs some real steep ups wet rock mud loose gravelly stuff big cornish steps to go up so it really is a thorough testing and the outsole performed really well good levels of traction on the muddy stuff and good levels of grip on the rock whether it was wet or dry so uh, definitely a positive test there and a positive uh, outcome so We've done the dips. We are now heading off to Tahiti Woods. So we're gonna get a little loop in the woods just to test the shoe out on some sort of rooty, slippery trails as well. So off to the woods, let's go. made it back in one piece the hamstring held up so looking good for the weekend because we're running hurtwood 50k at the weekend so this was a big test for the hamstring and the shoe performed really well out there on a, a big mix of different terrains and different underfoot conditions but when i came out i didn't have any lunch and i've definitely built up an appetite so we're going to get back home have something to eat and then we'll give you guys a full breakdown of how the new salomon s lab genesis performed out on the run back in the warmth of the studio and uh, we actually had to succumb to the weather today and put the heating on we've been really good up till now but it's just too cold so we had to switch it on and it did get a little bit chilly towards the end of that run but the saw uh, windbreaker long sleeve windproof top worked really well and we'll be having a full review uh, on the channel very soon of all the winter apparel that we've been testing from the brand anyway back to the shoe in question or should i say the rather muddy shoe now and it was was a really positive first outing on a very varied loop with some pretty challenging underfoot conditions at time and like I mentioned out on the run it is very S lab like when it comes to the fit and shape of the Genesis real precise fit real foot hugging shape and you know I felt nice and secure in that upper when I was moving on the more technical trails no movement no slippage or anything like that in the shoe I just felt super connected and it's what I'd kind of expect from an S lab product for a trail shoe that's been designed to handle a big mix of terrains I actually think the lug layout and depth is pretty aggressive on that outsole and it performed well on pretty much everything out there on today's run no issue with the muddy sections and no issues with those wet slippery roots when I ventured into the woods I just felt nice and confident underfoot there was one point when I was out in the dips there running down a steep sort of technical rocky descent I just so happened to step on a certain type of rock that was quite greasy and I did have a bit of slippage but that was the only time um, so I'd say this contagrip rubber maybe doesn't give me that sort of underfoot confidence that I'd get from say a vibrant mega grip when I'm running on rocky trails but all in all I think it performed really well on a route that pretty much had a bit of everything uh, as a comparison I would say it gives a bit more grip and traction than say an ultra glide but maybe not as much as say an S lab cross 2 so I'd say somewhere in the middle of the two as far as that energy surge compound in the midsole goes it handled everything really well out on today's run uh, just enough cushioning on the sort of sections of firmer compacted trail and the sections of tarmac I had to run and I would say 
It is slightly firmer underfoot when you compare it to the Energy Surge Compound midsole in the Ultra Glides. I wouldn't say in a bad way, and it's what I'd kind of come to expect from a trail running shoe from the Salomon S Lab range. Still very comfortable to run on, but if you do prefer a very sort of plush, soft feel underfoot in your trail shoes, then I would say the Ultra Glide would be the option to go for. Really good levels of protection underfoot from that midsole as well. And I think where that compound is a bit firmer, you do feel quite a bit more sort of connected to the trails when you compare it to that slightly softer midsole on the Ultra Glide. The ankle gaiter system seemed to work really well and it made the back end of that upper very, very comfortable wrapping around your foot. And I actually really enjoyed every aspect of this upper. Having that sort of booty construction or that endo fit as Salomon call it, it is quite stripped back when it comes to the padding to keep that weight down, but they've got the tongue area just right in my eyes. Just the right level of padding that makes it feel super plush across the top of your foot, but you can still get a really good lockdown around your midfoot. And then this has to be the best quick lace tongue pocket design to date on any of their sort of current uh, trail running shoes placed really well, just the right size, makes it very easy to stow that lace away before your run and very easy to get it out afterwards. And this is a massive improvement on that quite poorly designed tongue pocket on the Ultra Glides. Now, I know it's only my first run in the shoes, but I can see myself becoming a bit of a fan of these because it's really nice to have that sort of lightweight foot hugging feel of an S-Lab shoe with a bit more substance when it comes to cushioning and protection out on those longer runs. And then you've got the added bonus of that great toe bumper, those protection pads, and that pro feel film worked into the midsole. So we're gonna to continue to put miles into the shoe and then we'll be back with the full in-depth review on Salomon's S-Lab Genesis. So that's it, that is a wrap on another first run, first impressions video here at the channel. Really hope you've enjoyed it. And I also hope you enjoyed seeing those stunning views up on the epic North Cliffs of Cornwall. Uh, it really was a beautiful afternoon for a trail run. Uh, it'd be great to get your feedback guys as well. So if you've been running in a pair of these, get in the comments below, let us know all about how it's been performing. And don't forget, if you have found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only takes a second to do, super simple, just click on that little red box down there in a the corner. And even better, it doesn't cost a penny, but it really helps the channel out when it comes to the crazy world of the YouTube algorithm. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that bell icon as well, because then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content. You can also follow us on our other social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or Strava, but I'm off to sort of make a start organizing things for Hurtwood 50K at the weekend. Really looking forward to the event, really looking forward to going up and running on a route that I haven't run before. And obviously, it's always great to hook up with the Freedom Racing crew. But for now, guys, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. It really is appreciated. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. Uh, we've got a kind of booty construction, or as like Salomon, or as like Salomon like. <laughs> Hope everybody is fit and well out there, and you <laughs> super lightweight, uber stripped back sort of racing day snake, racing day snake. <laughs> if you haven't come across Matrix before, it's actually a patented uh, something. <laughs> it's, it's patented. Um, patented technology material. It is patented technology material. Let's see if I can remember it next time. <laughs>